Ballyclare District Historical Memorial Association. Arthur Guinness, Unionism Hidden in the History of the Black Stuff. The largest British brewery isn't in Britain, and it doesn't brew beer. The brewery of Arthur Guinness Son & Co is British owned and the largest brewery in the world. It is located in the Irish Free State and forms one of the main export businesses of what is seen as a very troubled dominion. The Guinness family is an Anglo-Irish family known for their accomplishments in brewing, banking, politics and religious ministry. The family is most famously known for its brewery and its production of the world famous Guinness Stout. The founder of this globally recognised brewery is Arthur Guinness. Arthur was born in Selbridge, County Kildare in 1725 to parents Richard and Elizabeth and he was one of six children. Richard was land steward to Dr Arthur Price, the Archbishop of Cashel, and part of Richard's duties was to supervise the brewing of beer, and this is no doubt where the young Arthur first learned the art of brewing. The Archbishop was Arthur's namesake and godfather, and he had left Arthur £100 on his passing, and with this, Arthur began the building of an empire. Having started with a small brewery with his brother in Leeslip, Arthur left it in his capable hands and went on to grow the business by signing a 9,000 year lease for the brewery in St James's Gate in Dublin for a rent of £45 per year. And after a legal battle, a further £12 was added for the use of water. In 1761, Arthur married Olivia Whitmore. They had 21 children but sadly, only 10 survived into adulthood. Although very rarely ever mentioned, Arthur was an Irish Protestant, a Unionist who was strongly opposed to Ireland's independence and home rule. In 1797, the Union Star newspaper claimed he was a British spy, describing him in an article as a brewer at James's Gate and active spy. United Irishmen will be cautious of dealing with any publican who sells his drink. Arthur's successors at St James's Gate were also staunchly loyal to the British Crown. A descendant of Arthur's, Lord Ivy, donated £100,000 to the UVF Arms Fund in 1913, which gave rise to a boycott of all Guinness products, and the brewery was given the name as Traitor Juice Brewery by the Irish rebels. The 1916 Easter Rising took the British Army by surprise with most of their military hardware sent to Europe in the war against Germany. The troops mobilised in Ireland were mainly army reservists and with limited resources had to improvise with armoured vehicles being quickly constructed to ensure the troops protection when they stormed the buildings the rebels had taken over. The Guinness Brewery had donated around 20 Daimler flatbed lorries and these were converted into armoured vehicles at the Great Southern and Western Railway Company. 33 drivers employed by Guinness volunteered to drive the donated trucks, a resource much needed as most of the soldiers didn't know how to drive. There has been many debates as to whether the trucks had been donated or that the British Army had forcibly acquired them. General John Maxwell, who was the Commander-in-Chief of the British forces in Ireland, had written a private letter to Arthur E. Guinness and it confirms they were donated. The letter dated the 17th of May 1916 states at this moment when the lorries you have so generously put at our disposal are being returned to you I would like to take this opportunity of thanking you personally and your firm for the splendid spirit you have displayed in coming to our aid during an extremely critical period. I can further assure you that the assistance given to us by your lorries practically saved us from a breakdown in our transport arrangements and enabled us to get through without a hitch. 
I should like to bear testimony to the pluck and loyalty with which your drivers have attended to their lorries throughout the late rebellion. It is impossible to speak too highly of their qualities, and I consider they are an honour to their firm and to their country. Arthur's work on improving the working conditions at Guinness lasted long after his death. In the 19th and 20th centuries, having a job at Guinness meant you were well looked after. Guinness continued with equality in the workplace, health insurance, subsidised meals, pensions, higher wages and more, including having a drink after work before you went home for the evening. If you are enjoying our channel, please let us know by clicking on the like, share and subscribe icons below.